Hello there, guys. Welcome to your first video for pre-calculus. I know this not, might not be the most ideal situation for us to be in, but ultimately, I'd rather you guys get some form of math education, and then you just have an everyday study hall patiently waiting for the new wave of teachers. So all I ask is for grace and patience as we do make these videos as best as possible. So at the end of every day, I just ask you to fill out a Google form, giving me um, constructive feedback. Because once again, I want these videos to be the best. So And it's going to be your feedback that drives me and gives me the true feedback that I need to make these videos as best as possible. So before we dive in, I just want to kind of go over my standards and how I will be grading and assessing your work. So I want to, and every single handout, every exit ticket, every homework, you're going to see this math standard. And if you notice, it shows reasoning and absence of reasoning. And that is how I'm going to be grading your quality assigned assignments. Um, I do not really care about the correct answer. Yes, that little bit is going to make sure you get it from an 85 to a 100, but it's through reasoning that is going to really determine from that zero to the 85. Um, my feedback is going to be about your reasoning, not about your answer. So you will never see reason, my, reason, my feedback saying correct answer, incorrect answer. It's more going to be commenting on your reasoning skills. Additionally, effort is a bare minimum expectation. So you don't, if you don't do these next following three things, you will always have a grade of 50 on your assignment. A, meet and organize work. B, answering all parts of the question. And C, applying units and rounding. Once again, if you don't do those basic three things, your grade will automatically be a 50, no matter how great your reasoning is on the assignment. So for today's lesson, let's dive in. The purpose of it is ultimately unit one was not the best and we have to close some gaps. And ultimately, I'm we're not gonna start unit two until Wednesday. I think it's really important that we do master some unit one concepts that will set you up for success for the unit one, I mean, the semester one final. OK, so today we're going to do some circle problems that, once again, will prepare you for success for the semester one final. So let's go ahead and dive in. The yin yang simple can be explained with the following dimensions. What can be the perimeter covered by the yin black region? So when I hear the word circumference, I mean perimeter, I am automatically drawn to the word circumference. So I know that is going to be the formula I need. So I'm going to go ahead and write that out for myself right away. So, and the formula for circumference is two pi um, times radius. So now that I'm looking at the figure, I want to just gear my mind of what I am looking for. And I'm looking for the perimeter of this pink region. So that is going, oh, I didn't do it all. That pink region, this part is just covering me. There we go. <laughs> um, we're trying to find the perimeter of this pink region. So I know I just can't do the circumference formula as is because that's going to tell me the circumference of the entire circle. And that is not what I'm looking for. So I need to really look at this visual and ask myself, how can I utilize it to get to my answer? And I noticed right away that this figure kind of benefits me. And I noticed when they cut it in half, I have these semicircles. So I'm gonna kind of label this for myself. So like right here, we have like this one semicircle. I'm gonna call it semicircle A. And then we have this other semicircle here. And I'm gonna call it B. And then we look at the entire um, left-hand side, you could also call this semicircle C. So I, I think if I just find the circumference of those three semicircles, I can make some progress. So once again, meet and organize work. As you already see, I'm labeling these semicircles. I'm not just saying, oh, I have one there, I have one there and one here. I'm labeling them A, B, and C. So I'm going to go ahead and split my page as such. So we're going to have circumference of A, circumference of B, and last but not least, circumference of C. So once again, just trying to make my work neat and organized, I'm meeting my own standards, so I expect you to meet them as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just write the formula once again, 2 pi r, 2 pi r, and 2 pi r. So ultimately, what I am seeing right here is that for circumference semicircle A and B, if the entire radius is eight for the whole circle, then the radius from here to here is going to be half of the radius. So A and B, 
is going to have a radius of four centimeters. Because if you look at it from four to four, four to four, and that's going to equal to eight, right? So we're going to label this is going to have a radius of four centimeters. This is going to be have a radius of four centimeters. And once again, this little problem already tells us that the radius of the entire circle, which is circumference of semicircle C, is going to be eight centimeters. And once again, if you notice, I'm keep on writing centimeters. I'm using units, bare minimum effort. So now that I, I identified all the variables that I need for my formula, I'm now going to go ahead and plug them in. And then ultimately, I'm going to have the circumference for circle semicircle A and B is going to be eight centimeters pi. And then for circumference C, uh, semicircle C is just going to be 16 centimeters pi. So if I add them all together, because once again, that is what the question was asking for. It wasn't just asking for A, B, and C. It was asking for the entire black region. I, we will get 32 centimeters pi. Once again, I'm using my room units to ensure that I'm meeting my bare minimum effort standards. So just to recap, because they were asking for the circumference, I was able to utilize um, the, um, the because they were asking for perimeter, I was able to utilize the circumference formula. However, I realized that the circumference formula tells us the um, circumference of the entire circle. So we carefully examined our yin yang symbol and notice that the semicircles within it will help us. And we utilize the semicircles within it and use the circumference of those semicircles, we were able to figure out the answer of the grand, the greater problem. So that was going to be model problem number one. Now for model problem number two is the world famous circle problem where they're giving us an equation of a circle and they want us to find the radius and the uh, the radius and the center of the circle. So one thing that's really important to know is just what is the general formula? So it's going to be X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. And before we get into the actual problem, I just want to expand um, the, these little squared parts right here. That's going to end up being x squared minus 2xh plus h squared plus y squared minus 2yh plus, oh, sorry, plus k. This should be a k. Apologize. Equals r squared. So if you really notice what's happening, we have a bunch of x's, then a constant. We have a bunch of y's, then a constant, and then we have our radius on the other side. So that is how I'm actually going to set up our problem. I'm going to have all the x's together. I'm going to leave a space for a constant. Then have all the y's together. Leave a space for a constant, and then have all, and then have something on the other side. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to rewrite this as x squared. Then I'm going to put the plus twenty x, and then I'm going to leave a space for this potential h square. Then I'm going to put my y square. I'm going to put that minus 18y. And once again, I'm going to leave a space for that constant. And then this little plus 5 right here, I'm going to bring it to the other side of our equation. So I'm just going to minus 5 on both sides. And right now, for now, it's going to say minus 5. So the reason why I like to put those blanks, because I like to force my brain to think. Because once you see a blank, you go, OK, I need to put something in that blank. So what? how do we figure out what goes into that blank? We're going to utilize b divided by 2 squared. b divided by 2 squared. And remembering the general formula, ax squared plus bx plus c. So this b value is what we're going to look for. And that b value can be located right here once again and right here once again. So first, we're going to do 20 divided by 2, which is 10. 10 squared, which is 100. But whatever we do to one side of the equation, we must do it to the other side. We must make it equivalent still. I'm going to add 100 over here. So now for the y part, our b value is negative 18. 
negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9, and 9 squared is 81. And once again, I'm going to add 81 on the other side as well. So now we have it. We completed the square. That's what that is called, completing the square. Now we can get it into its factored form. And real quick, I'm just going to add all this up together. 100 plus 81 is 181. 181 minus 5 is 176. So we're going to have our x here and our y here. So now what goes in this blank? So now we're going to just utilize doing b divided by 2. b divided by 2. So once again, that b values are still going to be the same. So we're going to do 20 divided by 2, and that's going to be plus 10. Then we're going to do negative 18 divided by 2, and that's going to be negative 9. And boom, we got it into the equation of a circle that we're accustomed to seeing. So now I just need to answer the question, the effort standards, and state what is the center of our circle and what is our radius. So because I see this is a plus 10, our center is going to be negative 10. And because I see that's a negative nine, that means our equation, our y coordinate is going to be a positive nine. And the radius is going to be the square root of 100 of 76, which I'm going to leave it for that for now. So remember that that 176 represents r squared. So to get the radius, we just need to do the square root of it. So this will be the answer. Now for the next part, they're asking, is the point five comma negative four on the circle, in the circle, or out of the circle? Justify your response algebraically. So the way we utilize that is we're going to take that point and plug it into the equation of our circle. And if, when we plug it in, if it is greater than r squared, that means it is outside the circle. If it is less than r squared, that means it is inside the circle. And if it's equal to r squared, that means it is on the circle. So we're going to go ahead and do 5 plus 10 squared plus negative 4 minus 9 squared. And we're trying to see what would that be equal to? Is that going to be greater than 176, less than 176, or equal to 176? So 5 plus 10 is 15, and 15 squared is going to be 225. Zero, I mean, sorry, negative 4 minus 9 is going to be 13, and 13 squared is 169. So now we just have to do 169 plus 225, which is 394. And because 394 is greater than 176, once again, this is our R square is our R value is right here. That means we are going to be outside of the circle. And that is how we answer that problem. So those are going to be our two model problems for today. Your next question is going to be a similar to one to the first model problem, where your exit ticket is going to be similar to the second model problem. So have a good rest of your lesson and work hard.